Hey, Psych2Goers. Do you feel stressed because it's that time of the year and you need a way to improve your health, both mentally and physically? Well, today's video is sponsored by Noom. With 2021 rapidly approaching, Noom is here to help you reach your health and wellness goals. They have amazing support ranging from live group chat to a personal coach to keep yourself accountable and empower self-change. Watch this video till the end for more information. Now, let's begin. Hey, Psych2Goers, and welcome back to another video. Thank you all so much for the love and support that you've given us, enabling us to make yet another exploration into everyday psychology. So let's begin. Where is that one place you spend most of your time and love decorating? Did you know that beyond being your safe space, your bedroom says a lot about your personality and habits? Your very own choice in selecting decor, furniture, and your organizational habits are telling on you. Who knew, right? Why is your bedroom so special to you? It's where I sleep. It's the only place to get some much needed alone time. Right you are, but it goes deeper than that. Why did Native Americans make pottery with earthy tones and designs based upon plants and animals? Throughout time, people have manifested their identities through objects around them. This same principle applies now as well, for we often pick items for our bedroom that reflect who we are and who we wanna be. Your bedroom is an extension of you, keeping you grounded to who you are. In Malcolm Gladwell's bestseller, Blink, The Power of Thinking Without Thinking, he references personality psychologist Samuel Gosling's experiment, which established a link between bedrooms and personality. Gosling's experiment asked total strangers to guess the personality of students just by observing their dorms, and their guesses were more accurate than the ones their close friends made. What? So Gosling used the results to break down the personality revealing aspects of a bedroom into three factors. In this video, we'll be discussing the three factors that specify how your space reflects you. Number one, identity claims. So let's take a look around your room. Is that your favorite book over there? What's covering every other inch of your wall and why? Identity claims are what you are and what you wanna be. It's your attempt in shaping others' opinions of you. These openly reveal chunks of your personality for others to see. You put them out there for a reason, and they're doing their job well. They're often items related to your hobbies and interests that you brandish about your room. For example, trophies and medals from playing sports or posters from your favorite franchise all around your room. These show anyone who enters your room, your tastes and preferences. They also say a great deal about you and what your interests are. Your sports trophies show you're an avid athlete, on the other hand, mounds of books and to-be-read piles all around say you're a bookworm through and through. By looking at what you've chosen to display around your room, you can get a feel for what you prioritize as the highlights of your life and what you want your life to emulate. Number two, behavioral residue. Do you have to shove things under your bed when people come around? Do you often leave your shoes lying about? What did you do with that fresh pile of laundry you just brought in? Unlike identity claims, Behavioral residue is what you unconsciously do with your room. It's all in the little things you do when you aren't paying attention. It could be leaving your dresser open or clothes out on the floor. These small habits say a lot as well. For example, if you leave your dresser open or procrastinate putting away your clothing, you might be someone who is bigger picture oriented. On the other hand, if your room is always neat and tidy, this shows that you're someone who is detail oriented. However, aside from your intuitive habits, Behavioral residue includes unconscious acts that you wouldn't want others to see. In other words, if you took the time to think consciously about them, you wouldn't do them. When people come into your room, you make it as presentable as possible, which often entails putting away clothing and shoving potentially embarrassing things under your bed. You don't wanna show people your disorganized room, nor do you wanna show them anything you're embarrassed about. Thus, by looking at behavioral residue, you can see what you don't show people and sometimes wish wasn't a part of your life to begin with. Number three, thoughts and feeling regulators. Are you a fan of scented candles? Have you put up any motivational quotes around your study space? All of these can be called your thoughts and feeling regulators. These are the things you put in your room to help your mental health. They could be photos to remind you of happy times or scented candles to uplift your mood. These self-care items reflect how conscious you are of yourself. By having a lot of them around your room, chances are you're well attuned to your emotional needs and what makes you happy. If you don't have them as a staple in your room, 
You might still be in the process of figuring out your emotional needs and what uplifts you. By looking at what you put around your room to regulate your mood, others can get a sense of the people, places, and activities that you enjoy most. Simply put, your bedroom is your mind's physical home, so it stabilizes, organizes, and embodies your identity. This is the reason why you feel most at home, at home. We hope we were able to give you a little insight into the ways your space defines you. Did you learn anything from your bedroom? Perhaps it was something you've just noticed after inspecting it closely. Feel free to comment down below what your bedroom says about you. If you found this video interesting, be sure to hit the like button and share it with others to help them uncover the hidden truths in their rooms. Subscribe to Psych2Go and hit the notification bell icon so that you'll get notified whenever we post a new video. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Did you relate to any of the points in the video? What do you think of the animation? Let us know in the comments below. Before we wrap up this video, we wanted to mention that we're happy to have Noom as a sponsor today. Noom isn't your typical weight loss program. Noom is different. Using psychology and habit changes, Noom provides you with the tools you need to make healthier adjustments to your daily life. While you may feel grumpy, more tired, and burnt out from all the festivities, if your goal is to achieve a healthy weight, sleep, exercise, and mental health need to be taken into account. Take the free online evaluation by clicking the link below. You'll get a custom program based on your goals. And over time, Noom will help you feel more confident, have higher energy levels, and most importantly, reach and achieve your personal goals. All you need is five to 10 minutes using the program each day. And with consistent effort, you will find that you have a new relationship with food. There's no restrictions when it comes to food. All foods are allowed on Noom, in moderation. Check out Noom in the description box and start developing healthy habits and take control of your life again.